So here we go with uh, lesson 38, section 11.2, ellipses. Uh, we're going to have two lessons on ellipses, 38 and 39. Uh, quite simply, an ellipse is a set of points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points in the plane is a positive constant. So instead of one focus as we had in parabolas, we will have two foci. So I marked the two foci in there. You pick any point. I, I've marked two points here, P and H. If you take that distance from each focus to the point and add them up, that distance will never change. That sum will never change no matter where you go. You know, D1 might change, D2 might change, but their sum will never change. That's the definition of an ellipse. A lot of people just think it's just a squished down circle, which really it is. Now the midpoint of the two foci is the center of the ellipse. That kind of makes sense that it's in the center of the entire ellipse. There are two axes. Uh, there's the major axis and there's the minor axis. Now the major axis is the one that connects the vertices. Now the vertices are just outside of the foci. They're on the major axis. The foci and the vertices are on the big axis, the major axis. The minor axis is the shorter of the two and we have M and M prime here and we don't there aren't four vertices. We don't call those vertices. They're, they're just the endpoints of the minor axis. So two axes, the major and the minor. Major is bigger than minor. The major axis contains the vertices. It also contains the foci. All right, we got letters A, B, and C to get out here. A is the distance from the center to the vertices. B is the distance from the center to the endpoint of the minor axis. And C is the distance from the center to the foci. So those are three letters that are really important. A and B are used in the, um, in the equation, and then A, B, and C are then related, and that's how we deal with ellipses. So the standard equation of an ellipse with its center at the origin is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, or x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. A always is the larger of the two. So it depends if A is underneath the X or if A is underneath the Y will tell us which direction the major axis is going to go. So A is bigger than B, uh, B is bigger than, they're both bigger than zero. The length of the major axis then is 2A. That connects the vertices. The length of the minor axis is 2B. And here's something that's really important. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. We normally know A and B. What we're usually trying to find is the focus. And the focus is C units away from the center. So now we have a rough idea of how these all work. Let's do some examples. I, I think that's better than, than looking at formulas. So here's our first one. Find the vertices, the foci of the ellipse, and we're going to sketch it out. Just a rough sketch is always a great idea. So x squared over 36 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. You need to figure out which one's a squared and which one's b squared. I'll give you a big hint. a squared is always the bigger of the two. So a squared equals 36, not because it's under the x, not because it comes first, because it's bigger than 9. B squared is 9, so A is 6 and B is 3. I don't put plus or minus 6 here because A and B are positive values. They're distances. C squared is A squared minus B squared. So 36 minus 9 is 27. So our C is square root of 27. Now because it's underneath the X, we know our vertices are going to be right to left. We know our major axis is going to be horizontal. That means the minor axis is going to be vertical and the foci are always on the major axis. They're always between the vertices. So our vertices are going to be plus or minus 6. Our minor axis is going to be 0 plus or minus 3. And our foci is going to be plus or minus square root of 27, 0. So here we sketch it out for you. And you can see the vertices are out there at plus or minus 6, 0. The minor axis is up there top and bottom. 0 plus or minus 3, and the foci, ah, square root of 27 is like 5 point something, so I just kind of guessed where it was at there. But you've got to remember, the vertices contain the major axis, contain the major axis, minor, the major axis, and the foci are always on the major axis. Let's do some more examples. So here we have x squared over 16 plus y squared over 49 equals 1, and again you need to figure out which is your a squared and which is your b squared. And again, a hint. A squared is always bigger than B squared because A is always bigger than B. So A squared equals 49, B squared equals 16, and C squared is 49 minus 16, 33. So A is 7, B is 4, and C is the square root of 33. So because the 49 comes underneath the Y, I know I'm going to be going up and down from the center to find my vertices. So that's why it's at 0 plus or minus 7. 
the endpoints of my minor axis, then I'll go right to left. That'll be horizontal, plus or minus 4, 0. And then my foci have to be on the major axis. Since the major axis is vertical, up and down, my foci have to be up and down as well. So I have my foci there as well. And so we're, I got a rough sketch here. Uh, the vertices are up there at 0, plus or minus 7 on the y-axis. The foci are at 0, plus or minus square root of 33. Yeah, 33. What's that? Almost 6. I'm pretty close to 6. The endpoints of the minor axis are at 0, plus or minus 4, or plus or minus 4, comma 0. So there it is, roughly. And again, the a squared has to be bigger than the b squared, because a is bigger than b. Well, here we have 15x squared plus 9y squared equal 45. I want to get this into standard um, form. And so we're going to divide both sides by 45 and see what happens. So divide both sides by 45. 15 goes into 45 three times. 9 goes into 45 five times. And of course, 45 goes into 45 one time. So we have x squared over 3 plus y squared over 5. Therefore, my a squared is 5 and my b squared is 3. And my c squared is 5 minus 3. So yeah, these are nasty little, you know, this is a is square root of 5, and b is square root of 3, and c is square root of 2. Now because the 5 is under the y, and my center is at the origin, I'm going to go up and down. So my vertices are at 0, plus or minus square root of 5. And then my foci have to be on that same axis. So my foci are going to be at 0, plus or minus square root of 2. So here's a rough sketch of it, and you can see that, yeah, square root of 5 is a little bit bigger than 2. Uh, square root of 3 is just under 2, and the square root of 2 is a little bigger than 1. I guess it's getting close there. And so I just kind of rough estimate there on those. Um, this is practically circular, isn't it? Yeah. So again, just get a rough guess on your on your drawings. I, I think it's a great idea that you sketch these out, because you got to get a feel for this. Here we go. And of course, we won't always leave the center at the origin. We're going to move it to h comma k, and this can cannot be a surprise at this point. X minus h and y minus k. And again, a squared is under is always the big boy. So if it's under the x, our major axis is right to left. If it if the a squared is under the y, then our major axis is up and down. So let's do some examples using h and k, or using a vertex that is not at the origin. So we have x minus 3 squared over 16 plus y plus 4 squared over 9 equals 1. We've got a couple things. We've got to find the center first. And remember, it's always the opposite. And x always comes first, so normally we don't have too much trouble with this. The other thing we have to do is figure out which is a squared and which is b squared. A is always bigger than b. So the center is at 3, negative 4. It's always the opposite. x minus 3, y minus a minus 4. So 3, negative 4. My a squared is 16, my b squared is 9, and my c squared is the difference of those two, 7. So a is 4, b is 3, and my c is the square root of 7. Now, because the 16, the big boy, is underneath the x, that means I'm going to be going right and left from the center to find my vertices. When you go right to left, you mess with the x value. So my vertices are going to be 3 plus or minus a comma negative 4. To find the endpoints of my minor axis, I have to go up and down. So you mess with the y. So my endpoints of my minor axis will be 3 comma negative 4 plus or minus b. And my foci, well, in this case, my foci have to be right to left. And so 3 plus or minus c comma negative 4. And then you just do the math. And so my vertices are at 3 are at 7 negative 4 and negative 1, negative 4. The endpoints of my minor axis are at 3, negative 7, and 3, negative 1. And then my foci, I'm just going to leave it this way, 3 plus or minus square root of 7, comma, negative 4. I, I guess I could write out 3 minus square root of 7 and 3 plus square root of 7, but I don't see the sense in doing that. And then i got a little sketch down there for you, and you can uh, figure out what we're looking at here. There you go. Well, here we have the experiment expanded form of the equation, and we want to get it into standard form. So we're going to be completing the square with the x and the y. Now what we're going to do, though, is get it organized. I'm going to get the x's together, get the y's together. I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get rid of the constant. So I group the x's, 2x squared plus 8x. I group the y's, 3y squared minus 24y, and I add 4 to both sides. Now you can't complete the square unless the degree 2 term has a coefficient of 1. So I factor a 2 out of the x's, and I factor a 3 out of the y. And I leave some room there. I always have that plus blank there. So I have 2 times the quantity x squared plus 4x. Well, then I take half of 4, square that. I get 
half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. And then I have to add 8 to the other side, because 2 times 4 is 8. I factor a 3 out of the y's. I have y squared minus 8y. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. But then I have to add 48 to both sides, because 3 times 4, 16 is 48. And then I work it down there. I got 2 times the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 3 times the quantity y minus 4 squared equals 60. Divide everything by 60, and I now have it in standard form. 2 goes into 60 30 times, 3 goes into 60 20 times, and of course 60 goes into 60 one time. So now I have the standard form of the equation. That's all I want out of it. We could get the, you know, the center, we could get the a squared and the b squared, but I just wanted to get it in the standard form. We could play with it later. Let's do another one of these. Oh, we got x squared plus 36y squared plus 6x minus 72y plus 9 equals 0. Same deal. Get it organized. Get the 9 out of there, and then we're going to complete the square. So again, uh, now there was nothing to factor out of the x's. I was already x squared. I had to take a 36 out of the y's, though. And I took half a 6 and got 3. 3 squared is 9. I added 9 to the other side. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. But I have to add 36 to the other side because 36 times 1 is 36. Um, I end up with x plus 3 squared plus 36 uh, times y minus 1 squared equals 36 divided by 36, and I get 36 underneath my x, and I get a 1 underneath my y, because the 36 cancels out there. That was kind of convenient, wasn't it? So my center would be at what? Negative 3, 1. My a squared would be 36. My b squared would be 1. My c squared would be 35. So there's all sorts of things we could do at that point. All right, let's move on. Well, here's one that's already been pretty much factored. All we got to do, do is divide both sides by 144, but there's going to be something unique happen here. That's why I wanted to get this one in. So let's divide both sides by 144 and see what happens. So you divide by 144. Uh, 9 goes in 32 times. That's not too bad. 32 doesn't go into 144. It reduces down to 2 ninths. Well, we're not in standard form yet because I've got 32 as my a squared. Well, I'm hoping it's my a squared. But what am I going to do on the other side? What am I going to do with that 2 times that quantity over 9? I've got to write it in some way that's equivalent to 2 divided by 9, but it all has to be in the denominator. And so I bring it down as 9 halves. Now, stare at that for a minute. You know, If I were to ask you to get rid of that fraction, you would multiply by 2 ninths, and you'd be back to 2 over 9. So it's equivalent. This is all I wanted to do. I wanted to show you how you move that down. And so now my a squared is 32 and my b squared is 9 halves. I mean, we could work with that. It would be nasty, but we could we could deal with it. But this is in standard form because I can see my a squared and I can see my b squared. So I just wanted to show you that um, how, we, how we do that. All right, let's find the standard form of the uh, uh, equation for the ellipse. We know the vertices and we know the endpoints of the minor axis. And you know what? This isn't too bad. You know your center's at the origin, because look, it has to be halfway between them. You know your A and you know your B. We can do this. So the vertices give away the A, and the endpoints of the minor axis give away the B. And so we ended up with A is 4 and B is 3, and then I had to square them, and I did it without my calculator. A squared is 16, B squared is 9. We know the center's at the origin, because it has to be halfway between the vertices or halfway between the endpoints of the minor axis. So this is it. x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. It'd be a little harder if we didn't have the uh, center at the origin, but, but not much. Moving on. Well, here's another one where the center's at the origin. I, I know this because the vertices are at 0, plus or minus 5, and the endpoints of the minor axis is at plus or minus 2, 0. Again, we've given away the a. We've given away the b. Uh, you'll need to figure out whether it's underneath the x or the y, but that's about it. All right, here we go. Uh, we got the a has to be 5 and the b has to be 2. And so my a squared is 25 and my b squared is 4. Now the reason I know the 25 goes underneath the y is because the vertices are on the y-axis. And therefore it's y squared over 25 and I have the x squared over 4. In the previous example, the vertices were on the x-axis. And that's why we put the a squared underneath the x and the, y, and the uh, b squared underneath the y. So we kind of gave it away here by telling you which vertices it was on or which axis it was, the vertices were on. Uh, moving on. Well, this is what I meant by being a little tougher. We're going to have to figure out where the center's at. And you know, you can just look at this and get the center. Look at those vertices. Negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3. And the endpoints of the minor axis are at negative 2, negative 1, and 0, negative 1. And so look at what they have in common, and I bet you can figure the center out based on that. But the first thing you better figure out is where the center of this thing's at. And sketching it out might not be a bad idea. 
So I went ahead and put the vertices in at negative 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 3. And look, they both have a negative 1 in common for the x. And then I put the, neg I put the endpoints of the um, minor axis in, negative 2, negative 1, and 0, negative 1. They have a negative 1 in common for the y. So our center is at negative 1, negative 1. And you can almost see that by just looking at the vertices and what they had in common and the coordinates of the endpoints of the minor axis and looking at what they had in common. Now all i got to do is figure out what's the a and what's the b. And we, to do that, we have to count. Well, our center's at negative 1, negative 1. And if you go up or down from the, from the center, you see that your a is 2. And if you go right or left, you'll find that your b is 1. So 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is, well, 1. So I have x minus a minus 1 squared over 1, and y minus a minus 1 squared over 4. Now, why did I know the 4 went underneath the, or why did I knew the a squared went underneath the y? Was because, look, the vertices are up and down. So that for, therefore, this had to happen. I had to put the a squared underneath the y, and I had to put the b squared underneath the x. And that's about it. Uh, let's do another example. So let's look at this one. And again, look what the vertices have in common. They both have a 2 for a y. And look what the endpoints of the minor axis have in common. They both have a 4 for the x. You can t I can tell you right now the center is at 4, 2. But let's go play around with it anyway. So I sketch it out. The vertices are at negative 1, 2, and 9, 2. And I look at the endpoints of the minor axis at 4, 5, and 4, negative 1. And so that tells me that the center has to be at 4, 2. But again, I could have guessed that without sketching it out. Now we've got to walk away from the center. We've got to figure out what our A and our B is, and we can wrap this up. So from the center, I don't care how you do this, whether you go right or left, but from 4, 2 over to that vertice 9, 2 would be 5 units. So my A is 5. And to go from 4, 2 up, to that 4, 5 is uh, 3 units, and so my b is 3, and so my a squared is 25, and my b squared is 9, so it's x from the center, x minus 4 over 25, and y minus 2 squared over 9, and I know that the 25 goes underneath the x, because look, the major axis is right to left, and so if you have a horizontal major axis, a squared goes under the x. That's about all I have on this one, and that wraps up our lesson. Well, that wraps up lesson 38. Um, so get to work on this homework. Lesson 39 will also be on ellipses as well. So get excited about that, I guess. I don't know. Talk to you later.